welcome. I've recently read a couple of interesting questions in the comments and I thought I should share them with you just in case some of you guys were wondering the same things. So let's get started. Can you please do a video explaining all the forms of Aches, Asta, Achela, etc. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around them. Okay, so Achesta and Achela can serve as demonstrative pronouns or as demonstrative adjectives. When these words have the function of a subject or of an object, um, that is when they replace a noun, they are called demonstrative pronouns. But they can also act as adjectives when they accompany a noun, then we call them demonstrative adjectives. When they are used as pronouns, in the nominative accusative case, there are also other cases, but I'm only going to refer to these two. Um, so in the nominative accusative case, Acesta and Agela have four forms each, depending on the gender and the number of the noun they refer to. Acesta, aceasta, aceștia, acestea. And acela, aceea, aceea, acelea. And here are some examples. Acesta este prietenul meu. Acela este prietenul meu. Aceasta este prietena mea. Aceea este prietena mea. As you can see, the demonstrative pronouns change their forms because the nouns they refer to or replace also change. In the first sentence, prietenul is a masculine noun in the singular, whereas in the second one, prietena is a feminine noun in the singular. So the pronouns have to agree with these forms. There are also some shorter colloquial forms that you can use instead of the full forms, but please keep in mind that these are considered to be rather informal. Ăsta, asta, ăștia, astea. And ăla, aia, ăia, alea. As adjectives, acesta and acela can be used in front of the noun or after the noun. That is why in the nominative accusative case, they will have eight forms each, depending on the gender and number of the noun and also on the placement. So if they are placed in front of the noun, they have following forms. Acest, aceasta, acești, aceste. And acel, acea, acei, acele. And here are some examples. Acest băiat este prietenul meu. Acel băiat este prietenul meu. Această fată este prietena mea. Acea fată este prietena mea. As you can see, the demonstrative adjectives change their form depending on the gender and the number of the noun. Also, it is very important to remember that when you use demonstrative adjectives in front of the nouns, the nouns do not take any articles. Now, if the demonstrative adjectives are placed after the noun, they have the same forms they do when they act as pronouns. Acesta, aceasta, aceștia, acestea. And acela, aceea, aceea, acelea. And here are some examples. Băiatul acesta este prietenul meu. Băiatul acela este prietenul meu. Fata aceasta este prietena mea. Fata aceea este prietena mea. One important thing to notice here is that if the demonstrative adjectives are placed after the nouns, the nouns take definite articles. And just in case you're wondering, there is no difference in meaning whether you use the demonstrative adjectives in front of the noun or after the noun. I get confused with how should I say I want and I need in Romanian because I keep hearing vreau, am kef and am nevoie. Can you help me please? Vreau translates as I want. For example, vreau un măr. When used with another verb, avre requires the subjunctive mood. For example, vreau să mănânc un măr. Ave nevoie and avea kef are verbal constructions meaning in turn to need and to feel like doing something. When used with a noun or pronoun, they are followed by the preposition de. For example, am nevoie de un măr. Am kef de un măr. When used with a verb, avea nevoie and avea kef also require the subjunctive mood. For example, am nevoie să mănânc un măr. Am kef să mănânc un măr. 
Can you explain the pronunciation of I at the end of words? For example, the difference between ban, bany, and bani. When it appears at the end of words, I is not pronounced fully, but as a very faint sound, especially when it's preceded by a consonant. I is almost silent. You know it's there because the consonant preceding it sounds softer than it does when there's no I following. And here are some examples. Ban, bany. Pantof, pantofi. Dorm, dormi. Sar, sari. However, if I is preceded by R or L, which in turn are preceded by another consonant, I is pronounced fully. For example, metru, metri. Aflu, afli. And back to your question, um, in case of bani, there's a double I at the end because the first one stands for the plural and the second one stands for the plural definite article. Let me give you another example because the word money doesn't have a plural form in English. Um, let's take, for instance, the word pantof. Now pay attention to my pronunciation. Pantof, pantof, pantofi. As you can hear, the double I at the end of the last example is pronounced as one full vowel and not as two separate vowels. Why does copil not change to copil? Is it irregular or neuter? First of all, copil is a masculine noun and many masculine nouns that end in L, which is preceded by a vowel like A, E or I, when they take the plural ending I, they usually lose that L. For example, copil, copi, cercel, cercei, cal, cai. Alrighty, that's about it for now. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and that you learned something new. If you have any suggestions for new videos or any language related questions, I'm always very happy to read them. So leave them in the comments. Okay, I'll see you next time. Be happy!